Hey, Sean, I found this really great race on D&D Beyond. It's really well put together. It doesn't leave much room for error. It's really awesome. I would love playing one. It would make me such a fun guy. They're short, too. You know, short and port to Bella. Today, we're going to be going over the Mykonid race. Welcome everyone, I'm Sean, this is Tony, and today we're going to be looking at a homebrew race called the Mykonid. Now, I love Mykonids. Oh, they're great we, on yes, salads. Yes, they are. Yeah, they're, they're great, They're delicious they? on salads, they're good <laughs> next to chicken. <laughs> um, but they are they are fantastic uh, enemies and NPCs as well. Yeah, and, and for those who don't know, it's not really a common enemy that we tend to see in uh, in D D settings. It kinda of depends on like where you where you're at, if you're in like an underdark area or like I think they also come up in the face sometimes too. Yeah. Um, they're basically kinda of like these fungus, mushroom ish kind of people basically. Yeah. And think of, you know, the, the, the toadstool kingdom. Yeah, but yeah. you know, not as talkative because they communicate through spores. Yes, exactly. So this one is from user Kiv, K I V V. Um and on this D&D one's, Beyond. Uh, D&D Beyond. Of yep. And this one's really cool. Uh, it goes into a little bit of description about what myconids are, in case you're not exactly sure. Uh, they're generally, you know, about like regular humanoid size, maybe four to six feet. Um, and it's interesting that they mention that there is like this uh, endoskeleton that they actually have inside our bodies. In their bodies, we were talking about how we kind yeah. of they were just like a, a mush. <laughs> I thought they were just mushrooms, but yeah. this one goes into being that they actually have a skeleton that weighs a good twenty or thirty pounds. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of interesting, but. They get some interesting improvements uh, to their stuff. They get um, wisdom by two and constitution by one. Yep, makes sense. Fair enough. Old wise mushroom. Yeah, right, exactly. Why not? Um, Superior dark vision is the next thing they get. It's 120 feet. So it's like dark vision, but like on steroids. It basically kind of doubles like normal dark vision, which would normally be like 60. Um, So basically you have like this like extra farther vision. It makes sense. They're usually kind of living in these like under dark areas. So it's very fitting. And again, it's it's dark vision, so it's shades of gray. It's not this, you know... Full color. Some people forget. Yeah, it's like it's like a dog sight, really. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, now we get into like the, the cooler actual features that actually kind of borrow from the NPC Myconid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the first one is pacifying spores. Mm-hmm. So with this one, you can use your action to eject spores at a creature you can see within fifteen mm-hmm. feet. Uh, they make a save, a uh, Constitution save, I believe. Right? Mm-hmm. It's eight plus your proficiency plus your Constitution modifier, which should be high because you have plus one yeah. to your con. Um, and then it, it stuns them for one minute if they fail, right? Yeah, uh, so they're going to be stunned until they take damage, but they also get to make that saving throw at the end of each of its turns, so it's nothing that's like kind of too crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can only use it once per short or long rest. Doable, good for a racial ability, really cool. Mm-hmm. Now this next one, is that's repo, uh, Rapport? Rapport Spores. Rapport Spores. <laughs> now this, this goes back to the fact that the Myconids communicate... Uh, via via spores. Yeah, exactly. They're not really big on speaking. Um, and it actually mentions, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, where it says you can understand, read, and write common under common, but you can't speak it. Right. So you, you don't communicate no, you don't. via words. You so, communicate via these spores. So these yeah. rapport spores, uh, it's, it's a 20-foot radius, right? Yeah, and you can basically telepathically communicate with another person while they're within 30 feet of each other. Uh, the effects last for one hour. Thankfully, uh, you have a, pretty much an unlimited use of this because it's really your only way to communicate besides maybe like hand gestures or something, you know? Right. <laughs> what's, the, <laughs> what's that, shroomy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, but as far as that goes, I love that because it really, communication from a mushroom like that yeah. is literally they're sending part of themselves to you and then you understand what they're yeah. what they're saying. It's that's really that's neat. really neat. It's really neat. Um, but they also get sun sickness. Now, a a myconid normally will die in the sun. Yeah, they would normally die if they're out in the sun for an hour. So that's not great for adventurers. So thankfully, as a player character, uh, it essentially gives you disadvantage on strength, dex, and constitution based ability checks, attack rolls, and saving throws. So essentially, set up this is very much like a drow as it's, far as it, the, yeah. the light sensitivity it, it's, yeah. and the the dark vision. But again, not being able to talk and being able to to, uh, to do those mm-hmm. pacifying sports. And it's interesting because it affects physical skills. So you can still, like, all, charisma, intelligence, and wisdom, they're actually unaffected by this. So it's actually kind of interesting. That's good. These would make pretty good casters, I would think, too. Yeah. Even yeah, though sure. it's, well, wisdom. 
Wisdom cast. Oh, I, maybe because like dru- oh, the druids. spore druid, the spore druid. Oh my god, oh my god. A, spore a spore druid and a myconid. Oh boy. Yeah, See, <laughs> that, that would be pretty neat. In fact, I'd love to do this. I like yeah. the idea of not talking. Now it won't go well in something like a stream or something like that. Probably not. Uh, you'll be a little unfortunate as you're kind of just sitting there a lot of the time. <laughs> uh, but that's a, it's interesting that we bring this up because I think they're uh, even though they use the spores to communicate. I think there's a good amount of opportunity for role play and story that you can kind of develop with a character like this. They're obviously going to be a lot different from your regular elf or dragonborn. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, great on pizza. But, um, <laughs> you know, the thing is with it too is I, I've always liked this race particularly. Yeah. And I think you brought up something with the, with the actual... Um, something yeah, that so, you may have added. Yeah. Which you could probably do this if you're homebrewing it too. Um, and that is the distress spores thing from the Myconid adult. Yeah, so they have this feature where whenever a Myconid would take damage, uh, all other Myconids within 240 feet can sense its pain. Now, it yeah, it's obviously like a gameplay mechanic because, you know, it could give away your position or things like that. But if they added this to like a player, I think that'd be really great because it, you know, kind of adds this extra dynamic of how you can interact with your party. You're already in this position where you have to use your spores to communicate. By adding this kind of distress thing, it kind of like it evolves it to another level. See, and I like that too because it adds something of that spore transfer kind of thing. Mm-hmm. See, a, a mushroom is neither plant nor animal here on our yeah, planet, right? Exactly. So with this, it's kind of like in order to communicate with you, it has those spores that it sends to you. Well, at the same time, now you have part of that mushroom man inside you. <laughs> so now being able to feel that it's in pain is actually a really neat thing. A really great mechanic with that. And I think that if you just added something like that, that would even just improve this race a little bit more. It yeah. does nothing on a, on a uh, grand scheme for, for creating damage or overpowering the class. Not really, yeah. I mean, you could probably argue that, like, oh, maybe now, like, your party will always be aware of something's going to, like, attack, but, like, in the long run, it's not... I don't see this really kind of ruining the game or anything like no, that. No, and I would I would include it into that, that spore thing. Yeah. Because it would be something that once you've sent those spores out to the rest of your group, they'll be able to communicate through it. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, this race is kind of, like... It would be kind of considered among those rare races. It's kind of like if you ran into maybe, like like a Kenku or a Tabaxi. So they're kind of on that more rare side. So when you're implementing this in your homebrew campaign, uh, it's definitely something to take into consideration, unless, of course, you happen to write where they're like a main race. Normally, they these wouldn't really be considered kind of like your more prominent, dominant people in the land. Very, very hermity. Yeah. I think. You know, yeah. If, you're, if you're playing one, definitely play them as a recluse. Like a recluse <laughs> mushroom. Never mind. I'm done with the dad jokes. I'm sure. so sorry. Okay. But uh, definitely well, well done. Mm-hmm. And this was this was again written by Kiv, K-I-V-V. Yes, and you can go to d d Beyond to add that one. It's the highest rated myconid slash mushroom slash fungus race, so shouldn't be too hard to find on there. It's a fun one to play, and it has a lot of interesting abilities. Absolutely. And if you've got a race, even on D&D Beyond or a class or something you'd like us to review, just go ahead and send it whoop, right down there at dmbrewcrew at gmail.com. We'd be happy to look it over. If it's something that uh, excites us and wants us to, we would like to promote, we'll definitely make a video out of it. Or it might end up for playtesting on our stream called The Maw. Every other Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, we do a weekly stream where we playtest homebrew creations from people like you so we can make sure that it's balanced and have a little bit of fun with it. It's your chance to see something that you made on a, on a live stream, which yeah. you don't usually get that often. Exactly. And as usual, I want to thank all of our Patreons who are supporting us uh, now and for hopefully those in the future uh, that will be uh, providing us with more support. Uh, every dollar that we get goes back into the channel, whether it's reviewing content, getting better equipment, and so on and so forth. So again, uh, thank you to you. Absolutely. And remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are homebrewed. So until next time, keep, keep brewing. brewing.